Uh, we're in a, a sermon series now, and, and, and it's called The Way, and we're trying to figure out what we're trying to do. We're on, we're on a journey all the way to the cross, so all the way to Easter. We're in the book of John. We're in chapter 14. You can turn there in the, your Bibles if you'd like to. We're trying to figure out the way. Like God has a way. Jesus has a way, and it's not everybody else's way. In fact, it's nobody else's way. Now, we got problems, and one of our problems is, is that there, we are surrounded by ways. And we get distracted, pulled into other ways. And we need to know the difference between our way and God's way. We need to know the difference between all the other ways around. And you may wonder, what am I talking about all the other ways? Well, in Jesus' day, they had all kind of other ways too. So I'll start with his way, in his time, in first century ways. There was all kind of ways. There were Roman ways. There were Jewish ways. There were Sadducees' ways. There was Pharisees' ways, there were tax collectors' ways, there were sinners' ways. There's all these ways. And Jesus belonged to none of those ways. Those ways were not his ways, right? They just weren't God's ways. And uh, in our day, we got, we're surrounded by ways too. There's waves all around us. And none of the world's ways are God's ways. Amen. Say amen. None of the world's ways are God's ways. Now, and by that I mean capitalistic ways, uh, socialistic ways, communistic ways. None of those ways are God's ways. I, 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 mean, I mean Republican ways. I mean Democrat ways. None of those ways are God's ways. I mean, China ways, I mean, American ways, I mean, Indian ways. None of those ways are God's ways. They are ways, but they aren't God's ways. Now, there's two ways to look at ways. Okay, and one of those ways is like this. It's like I got to hang up with hot dogs. I got to hang up with hot dogs because I think they're ripping us off. Now, I don't, I don't try, I don't spend a lot of emotion with it, but I don't spend a lot of time trying to evaluate it. But, but when I go to, into the grocery store, I can't help myself but just check to see if it's changed. I try to check to see if they have changed their ways. They haven't. There are... Ten hot dogs in a pack of hot dogs. <laughs> there are eight buns. <laughs> in a pack of hot dog buns. Which means either you got to throw away two hot dogs or you got to buy another pack of buns. And throw away six buns you got to throw away six buns or two hot dogs, no matter what you do. And I think that way is horrible. I think it's just terrible. I think it's just awful. Okay. Now, it's a matter of opinion. Evidently, the people that make hot dogs disagree with me, and they're entitled to their opinion, and they make them, and I eat them, and so we, life goes on. So th that way is just kind of about opinions, Right? And it really doesn't, you can have yours and I can have mine and we can, you know, and all that. They're opinions. We have opinions. That's one way. Then there's another way. And, uh, and I, would, I would use an illustration from uh, World War I. In, in World War I, there was, a, there, was a, uh, there was a battleship, battleship captain. It was British battleship captain. Uh, and... And he, he was going his way. He had a chart. He was going. He was doing his thing. He was going his way. And he saw in the distance the light of another ship coming his way. And so he told his little guy that does the um, Morse code, the little Morse code guy, go out there and tell that ship that he needs to turn his course 10 degrees to the north. You know, I'm a battleship, battleship captain. You tell him, turn his so he goes out there and he does it. 
And uh, then the guy responds, and the captain said, what did he say? And the guy said, you turn your boat 10 degrees to the south. Well, the captain got upset. And he's like, you go out there and you tell him, I am a captain of this vessel. You turn your boat 10 degrees to the, which way am I going? North. The guy clicks back. No, I'm a private third class. Ching, 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 ching. Turn your boat 10 degrees to the south. He's furious now. He's like, all right, you go back there. You tell him I am a battleship and a captain and I'm in the British Navy and you turn your boat 10 degrees to the north. Ching, 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 ching. He does it. Ching, ching, ching. And then the other guy responds. Ching, 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 ching. What did he say? He said, he didn't care, he's a lighthouse. <laughs> okay, okay. See, there are some things that are like that, that it doesn't matter if, you're, if you got a battleship. It doesn't matter if you're a captain. It doesn't matter if you got a million people on your side. It doesn't matter, you know, how educated you are or how powerful you are, or how many degrees you got. It doesn't matter. He's a lighthouse. God is a lighthouse. See, and he has, he has his ways. And there are ways that work. And then there are ways to wreck your ship. Right? There are ways that work. Turn, you know, your boat. Go this way. I'm telling you what to do. I'm telling you the way to go. I'm telling you the path. If you don't want to believe me, you're going to wreck your ship. There are ways that work, and there are ways that don't work. It's not like hot dogs, right? It's not like hot dogs. It's not like it'll be fine no matter what. You pick your way. I'll pick my way. We'll all, you know, kumbaya, whatever. No, it's like he's a lighthouse. I'm a ship on the ocean in the middle of the night. I need to know which way to go. And if I don't go that way, then I wreck my ship. You see, the, consequence, the consequences are sure, the consequences are set, and they, they are significant. I can, either, I can either go God's way or, or there is going to be a problem. It's like taking medication or it's like, you know, doing brain surgery. You can't get in there and just go, you know what, I think I'm just going to take this piece of noodle out. You know, you can't do that. You can't just make up your own way. I think that looks wrong. I'm going to straighten that piece. Or, you know, you just, you, you can't. Do it. It's not arbitrary. There is a way to do it. Do it that way or there's going to be a problem. See, that's what the Bible is trying to communicate to us. This is what Jesus is trying to communicate to us. His way. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life, right? And, and, and if you go my way, right, everything will be great. See, we're all broken. We're all messed up. We're all beat up on the inside, right? And we're trying to fix that. We're trying to get ourselves into a place where we can be back into relationship to God. And we don't know how. We don't know the way. We don't know how to get there. Our, our mind can, it can try to think of it, it can try to imagine it, it can try to figure it out. But we just can't do it by ourselves. And so Jesus is trying to show you and me the way. Okay, that's what we're going to talk about. Lighthouse the way today. Y'all ready? Y'all good? Seven people. I'm not, all right. Y'all ready? Y'all on it? Y'all? Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. I appreciate. See, I appreciate that. That's good. All right. Let's stand up. All right. This is the way, right? He says, and it, 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 none of this is iffy, right? There's no, there's no, there's no ambiguity here. There's no real gray in this. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's just very clear. And I'll ask the Father, and he, see, I will. It's not like I might or if I have time. He said, and I will. I'll ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and, and will be with you forever. 
The spirit of, yeah, ooh, spirit of, yeah. The world, look, see, this is the, world, the world's ways. The world cannot accept him. Who? The spirit of truth. Because it neither sees him, doesn't see the spirit, nor knows him. Doesn't know the spirit. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will, see, it's not even, I mean, it's very definite. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father and that you are in me and I am in you. Whoever has my command, here it is again. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I too will love them and show them myself. This is the word of God for the people of God. Okay, here we go. Let's jump in here. Okay, there, there's this direct correlation. Jesus is making a direct correlation between, uh, be, between following his commands and loving him. Okay? He says, if you love me, you, you will obey my commands. And, and I think that's, you know, that's, that's, that's so, it's so clear, it's so direct. Um, there's, you can really think about it two different ways. And I'd love for you to think about it two different ways. One is this, is like this. If you love me, then you will naturally, then you will naturally just keep my commands. You'll just naturally do it. If, you, if, you're, if you're in a loving relationship, with me. So what I'm not saying is if you just come to church or if you just, um, you know, believe in God or whatever. That's not what this is saying. He's saying if you love me, then you will keep my commandments. In fact, I won't even have to tell you uh, really what they are. You will just, if you know who I am, if you know who I am and you love me for who I am, you will naturally just do what I would want you to do. Anybody in here married? Nope. Didn't want to admit it. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, here, here's, the, here's the thing. Okay, we may have... Wanted them to come with a book, you know, to tell us what to do. But none of them came with a book that told us what to do, right? We, we, did, we married them, and then there they were. Right? Every, every single day. Just every day, they're there. And, and, uh, and what we did was we got to know them, right? And then we got to figure out what they liked and what they didn't like. And, and, and because we love them, we try to pick the socks up, right? I mean, sometimes. Or we, we try to do the things that that person, we know that person wants us, you know, wants us, wants us to do. We don't, we don't need a list of rules. We don't need, to, we just know who they are. We know the, what they appreciate. We know what they value. We know their Myers-Briggs letters or their disc or whatever it is. And then we kind of figure it out. See, part of it's like that. That if you are in love with God, and you know, see, this is what you're trying to get to. You're trying to get into this loving, and I'm not talking about syrupy, sappy, kind of, kind of, kind of sugary sort of convenient sort of. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this hardcore sort of determined, sort of bold, courageous kind of committed sort of love is really what I'm trying to get at here. That is the relationship God wants to have with you. Not, not just passing by, hey, how you doing? You know, wave, you know, from a distance, keep our separation, you, you know. He, he's not interested in that. He wants to be, he wants you to be in love with him. And if you're in love with him, then you will keep his commandments. Now, if you're not in love with him, try to keep his commandments. Try. You won't be able to do it first. And second, if you try really hard and you don't love him, 
and you keep trying and you're a determined person and you don't give up, then what you're going to do is end up resenting God. That's what you're going to do. Right? You're, not, you're not doing it out of love. You're not doing it because you appreciate him. You're not doing it because you value him. You know, you're not doing it because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten, that I'm the recipient of the, the, the greatest grace in the entire world. That I, because of what God did for me, because of his love for me, I love him back and I could never do enough. I could never serve enough. I could never give enough. I could, you know, it's just, and it just brings me joy just to serve him in any capacity I can. Now, if I try to do that and I don't love God, then it's kind of like, oh, God, I got to go to church again. Right? Isn't once enough? I mean, a month, once a month, get that thing in there, be done with it. See, we'll feel resentful. The, the Father will give you another advocate to help you. You know, I love that. Give you another advocate. It's paraclete. It's like a, a, what you tie a boat up to, like a cleat that you would tie a boat up to secure you, to hold you fast, to hold you so you can't, you know, blow away in a storm. I'm going to give you the comforter. I'm going to I'm going to give you the I'm going to give you the wisdom of God. I'm going to give you the the this uh, uh, this advocate. Like if it was a judicial trial, it's the person that's on your side that's pleading your case for you. Somebody that's with you all the time. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you this person, right? I'm going to give you this advocate and they are the spirit of what? Spirit of what? Truth. truth. And everything that's not the truth is not from God. Everything that's not from the truth is where do you get your truth? Where do you where could you possibly see the truth is a side? There's all kind of sides. I already mentioned some of the sides. I mentioned the, the Democratic side, the Republican side, or the capitalist side, or the, the communist side, or the socialist side, or the Chinese side. There's all these sides. God has a side. That side is, that's why they killed Jesus, because he just would not do anything but tell the truth. It's the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And the more we are in the spirit, the more the truth is in us. The more the truth is in us, the more we can be in the spirit. It's a spirit of truth. See, the world can't accept him. Who? The spirit of truth. Because that's not the way the world operates. The world doesn't operate by truth. The, op the world is operating by gaining success, trying to win, getting on top. This is the way the world operates. The world cannot accept him because it can't see him, nor does it know him. See, uh, uh, the, the, the world is kind of like, the world is kind of like, uh, I did this illustration in the, in the, uh, in the first service, like an alcoholic in the beginning is different than an alcoholic at the end. In the beginning, an alcoholic or a drug addict, drug addict, they can see other things. They can see pain. They can see heartache. They can see relationships being broken. They can, they can see that. But the further they go along in the process, the further they go in the process, the less they can see the narrower their perspective gets. Until at the end, all they can see is themselves. That's all they can see. They can't see their, their, they lost their family. They can't see they lost their children. They can't see the heartache. They can't see the pain. They can't see the destruction. They can't see that they lost their job. They can't, they can't see that they're out on the street. All they can see is this drug is going to save me. That's what they see. That's it. And Peter talks about, Peter says this exact thing about the world. Whoever lacks these qualities, the qualities of the spirit, the qualities of truth, is so nearsighted, 
he has become blind. See, it's not just true. It's not just true about an alcoholic or a drug, that, drug addict. It's true about all of us. We can narrow our sights, narrow it until we become so nearsighted. See, we see things, we just see the wrong things. Mm. See, and that's why Jesus came to open up our eyes. That's why seeing God is the third treasure. Because we're so blind to what's around us. We're so blind to the, to the pain certain things cause. See, if we're not, see, this is God's way. And it's a lighthouse way. It's not hot dog way, okay? It's lighthouse way. It, it, it's a spirit of truth way, right? And, 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 if, and, if, and, if, and if you're not going that way, if, it's, if you're not loving Christ, if you're not obeying his commands, right, then, then the ship is not going to survive, They aren't difficult ways. They're not complicated ways. See, uh, and then he says in verse 17, he lives, he, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, he lives with you and will be in you. That's the the whole Old Testament right there and the whole New Testament. Because the whole Old Testament is the Holy Spirit living with us. The New Testament, the, whole, the Holy Spirit changes, and now he lives inside of us. It become, we become something completely different. We become bearers of the spirit of truth. In fact, the, the Bible says, uh, Peter says, you, and this is revolutionary, we become partakers of a divine nature. You become a house of the Holy Spirit. You become uh, a walking conduit of the kingdom of God. You become temples of the Holy Spirit. Tell the person next to you, you're a good-looking temple. You're good-looking. You're just good-looking. You're looking good. Because I live, you also will live. I love it. Jesus just tells him, listen, they, they don't understand anything he's saying. This doesn't make any sense to them. They're like, what is he talking about? Because we, he lives. Of course we're alive. Of course he's alive. What, what, there's no confusion there. Until he's, okay, but he's telling something they're going to need to know in the future. Right? But he doesn't hold back. He just goes ahead and lets them know what the truth is. Because I live you will live also. you got to remember that. Because Jesus lives, you will live also. Whoever, this is verse 21, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. That's just that he just reversed it around. Said exactly the same thing in verse 15, but he turned it around. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. See, see we, we can tell pretty easily if we love God, if we are in love with, I'm not saying knows God, right? Everybody, every, everybody knows God. Everybody knows of God. The devil knows of God, right? The demons know God. Knowing God's not the point. Loving God is the point. The devil knows God. He just hates God. He's opposed to God. He's an adversary of God. He is the deceiver, which is the opposite, right? Which is the opposite of the truth. And let me tell you something. Deception is not a lie. You, you, can, you can deceive people without lying to them. And your conscience is like clear. You said, well, I didn't lie to them. Yeah, but you let them believe something that was not true. That's exactly what the devil did to Adam and Eve in the garden. You're not, you're not going to die, right? Only, only he was like, he's like, you'll be like God, having the knowledge of good and evil. He just didn't tell them what that knowledge would do to them. 
He let them believe it would be something good when it was something horrible. Mm, thin line. Whoever, and the one who loves me will be loved by my Father. See, this, this, this is the whole thing. It's loving God. It's loving Jesus. It's knowing who he, You can't love somebody you don't know, right? We got to get to know who God is. All right, I want, I want to talk about this just a little bit. All right, these ways. Like God has a way. Like there's a way of obedience. Now, I hate obedience, I, I, I'm, 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 I don't really like it. I, I've never really liked it. I, from being a, just a young kid, you know, I, I just, it didn't suit me well. <laughs> My mama told me that, you know. But this is lighthouse way, not hot dog way. Obedience is the way. It has, it's irrelevant whether I like obedience, whether I appreciate obedience, whether I agree with obedience. It, it is completely irrelevant. If I don't want to be obedient, I, I will just drive my, uh, my battleship straight into a continent. You see, it's, 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 it's obedience. This is how we know, if, this is what he's saying. If you, if you, if you, it's not just knowing, it's not even just knowing the Bible. What good is knowing the Bible if you don't do it? When Jesus washed the disciples' feet, he didn't say, now you're done. This is the lesson. No! He said, now that you know these things, blessed are you who do. do. It's like, do. do. Do them. Blessed are you who do them. See, you know, what I, you know what I love about the church? I love this about the church, about our history. Is that the, the, the first 300 years of the church, there was no Bible. They just had like little letters and little things flying around. But they knew a few things. They, they knew some stuff. They knew a couple of things. They knew about the resurrection, you know. They, they knew about the love of God. They, I mean, and then they knew about the resurrection. And, they, and, they, and they, they, were, they were, you know, learning about the Holy Spirit. And they, and they knew about the resurrection. And then they, you know, they just knew, right, that part. And they changed the whole world. See, sometimes, and it's great. Now, don't get me wrong. I think it's great to keep learning, right? I think it's great to keep training. Keep training, keep learning, keep learning, keep training, keep training, keep learning, keep training, keep learning. But it's no good if you're just adding to the stuff that you're still not going to do. Are you just you, you don't want to just learn more stuff that you're not going to do. That is not helpful. It, it, and in fact, it could be deceiving you. You're thinking, oh, I'm learning all this stuff. Look how Christian I am. No, you're not. <laughs> Y'all getting me? Anybody? Like what? I mean, there is no point in learning anything if you're not going to do it. Do more. Do it at all. Like, and we're not confused about what we need to do. Here it comes. Just get yourself ready. Brace everything, okay? <laughs> I mean, you know what to do already. Like, like, it's not a, it's not a, it's not hidden. It's not uh you know, a, a, a mystery. You know that tithing is part of the deal. You know what that means? 10%. Of course, everybody knows. Every, nobody does it. Everybody knows. Okay, o 
obedience. You know what tithing is? You know what tithing says to you? And you don't have to tithe to the church. I don't care about your money. Give it to whoever you want. Just don't keep it. Because you need to know that God is number one in your life. It's a gift to you for you to be able to tithe to God. Because then you know God is number one in my life. All you got to do is see where your resources are going. You know what's God in your life. Uh Uh-oh. That obedience just went crazy just then right there. The other thing, go therefore and make disciples. It's not hidden. It's the great commission. If you're going to be a, (laughs) if you're going to be going in the way then you need to be making disciples somewhere in your life. You got a whole church. It's a disciple-making machine. You don't have to witness to people necessarily. You don't have to share the gospel. You don't have to quote scripture. You just need to be part of the machine that is making disciples. You need to be using the talents that God has given you because you are accountable for those talents. He says, to some I gave five, to some I gave two, to some I gave one. The the one I gave five turned it to ten, that's great. The one I gave two turned it to four, that's great. The one who turned one, buried it in the ground, didn't do anything with it, dug it back up, said, here, I still got my one talent, boo. It's no good. Obedience. Any questions? This is what we do. God gave you. I mean, the, 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 the instructions are not confusing, right? The lighthouse guy is saying, turn your ship 10 degrees to whichever way I said he said it. South. All right, that's all you do is follow. It's just, it's just you don't have to argue. It's just obedience, right? Second way is this, tre- uh, your spirit. It's the way of the spirit, right? And, and it's, and it's, uh, and we got to have the spirit because we sang the song. We aren't strong enough. We aren't powerful enough. We aren't smart enough. We can't figure it all out. We are broken on the inside. It's impossible for us to go the way, to walk the way without the Spirit of God, without the power of God inside of us. The whole Old Testament tells us that. So we have to have the Spirit of truth, and it's the Spirit, not a Spirit. There's all kind of spirits, like, everywhere, okay? There are spirits everywhere, and we get all hung up. We can get lassoed into other spirits and, 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 and it capture our lives, capture our attention, and drag us away from God's way. Drag us away from God's way. See, there's a spirit. I, I looked in the Bible and I found these. It's spirit of jealousy and the spirit of divination, a spirit of slavery, spirit of the world, spirit of cowardice, spirit of the Antichrist, spirit of error, spirit of deception. The Bible says every spirit that does not confess Jesus Christ as Lord is of the Antichrist. Every spirit. I got a question. What is this? All right. Well, first, let me say, I am a Southern boy. I am a product of the South. I know more about the Civil War than anybody else I've met personally. I know all about General Lee. I know about General Longstreet, right? I know, know, I know about Stonewall Jackson. I know about uh, General Johnson, right? I, I know about the Battle of Gettysburg and the Battle of Vicksburg and the Battle of Petersburg and, and Chickamauga and in Atlantisburg. That's not a real one, but it's Atlanta. <laughs> I mean, I know all of that. What is the spirit behind the Confederate flag now? What is going on with that? I don't, I don't know what it is. Where, I mean, are we anti-America? I mean, that's the Confederacy was trying to pull away from it. Are we trying to say, I'm a racist? Because that's the way people will see it. It was the flag of the KKK. 
What, what, is, the, what is the spirit behind that? Why, why, I mean, I'm driving down 40. Why do I got to look at a bunch of them Confederate? What does that mean in our culture? I'm pretty sure they're trying to say, you know, up yours. I'm pretty sure that's what they're saying. But I don't know to who. I don't, I don't, I don't get it, you know. And we get there's this, they're parading all this stuff around, and it doesn't, you know. You got to be careful about the spirit that you are following, that you are giving yourself over to. You, you, you don't, you don't see the Holy Spirit is not like that. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. You know, Jesus, Jesus says, Jesus said this. He said, I came into the world to testify to the truth. And everyone on the side of truth listens to me. See, truth is a side. He said, everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Truth is a side. And it's not all of our side. None of the worldly sides are on the side of truth. You know, back in the day, Herod, King Herod, was, uh, was I mean, he was, a, he, he was, people praised him. I mean, he was something. He was fantastic. Uh, on the side of the Jews, rebuilt the temple. I mean, the temple, the one in Jerusalem, and not only rebuilt the temple, but actually added on to it. And so he was lauded and he was praised and he was adored because he's for, you know, the Torah and the Jewish faith. And then old Herod finds out, somebody tells him that there's a baby that's born in Bethlehem that might be the Messiah. And you would think Herod would go, yay! I can't believe it. Great! I got this temple is built. Man, the timing is perfect. I'm right in here when the Messiah is showing up. Yes! You know what Herod does? He tries to kill him. And he couldn't find him. So he killed all the little boys below the age of two in all of Bethlehem. See, on God's side, no. Whose side? See, the side, God's side is the side of truth. Pilate. The thing I read just a second ago, Jesus said it to him. That's why I came into this world. I came into the world to testify to the truth. And everyone on the side of truth listens to me. You know what Pilate said to that? What is truth? The interesting thing is, Pilate knew exactly what the truth was. He knew. He said, there's no guilt in him. I find no offense with him. He's done absolutely nothing wrong. He's done nothing wrong. See, but Pilate wasn't on the side of truth. He was on the side of his own success. He was on the side of expediency. He was, he was on the side of making sure he gained more advancement. Who cares about the truth when the truth is in the way? And so he said, y'all kill him. That is not God's way. And that's a lighthouse, not hot dogs. See, it's lighthouse, not hot dogs. You can't be expedient with the truth, manipulative with the truth, twisting the truth around, and think you're walking in God's way. See, the truth is God's side. It's not a Roman side, a Jewish side, a Pharisee side, Sadducee side, Democrat side, Republican side. See, the truth is God's side. All other sides compromise the truth. All of them. 
in order for their side to succeed. And that's not God's way. Okay, it's just not God's way. Jesus did not compromise the truth. That's why they killed him. Last thing, love. It's the way of love. That's the way it is. It's the way of obedience. It's the way of the spit of truth. And it's the way of love. And, I, and I'm not talking about, that's the way it starts off, if you love me, right? This is, this is the whole thing this is what Jesus wants. And it's not this ooey, gooey, slimy kind of, you know, it's not that. Right? It's not just the flowers and it's not, it's not that. It's the thing that's underneath. The, it's the thing you really want. It's the thing that every man wants. Not just women. Every man wants it. We just don't recognize it. We just don't see it. Everything we're doing, right, is to get this this love that we are after, and we confuse it. We think it's adoration, but, but really what we want out of that is love. We think it's fame, but what we want out of that is love. We, we want reputation, but what we're really wanting out of that is, is love. We think it's money, but we think the money is going to make us lovable, or it's going to be power, and the power is going to make me lovable, or the control. So then once I have all the control, that will make me lovable. Somebody is going to finally love me. See, this is what we're looking for. And that's why Hollywood banks it all the time. I mean, all these movies that we, we flock to, you know, that, 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 that capitalize on, on, this, on this idea, on this yearning that is so deep inside. And, it, and they're all gladiator. It's all cut them up and chop them up and all this kind of thing until it gets to the very end. And then at the very end, it's just a guy. It's just a man who is giving his life so that this other little boy and this woman can live. That's what it is. He dies right there. So with the love of his wife and going to be with her, oh, man, what about Armageddon? Terrible movie. <laughs> Terrible. Awful. Until it gets to the end. In Armageddon, the asteroid is coming. It's going to destroy the whole earth. And, and uh, Bruce Willis is up there. And he's, you know, the dad of Gracie. And Gracie's down on the thing. And they got a terrible, hard relationship. And he doesn't like her, her fiancé. And the fiancé is up there. And, and, uh, and Bruce Willis comes along. And, and, and he's on the asteroid. And, and he sends the boy back. And he's, he, the boy thinks he's going to come right after him. But he doesn't. And he locks the thing and he sends the ship off the asteroid and he's talking to Gracie down on the planet. And he says, I love you, Gracie. And she says, I love you too, Daddy. See, and it's just a man giving his life for people that he loves. You know, the, the, even the movie Fury, even World War II. And it's just tank battles and blowing up people until it gets to the very end. And it wouldn't be a very good movie unless the end was the way it ended. And it was five guys, because of their love for each other, they all died for each other. They all gave it up. Every single one of them, all of those, just imitations. Imitations of what? Imitations of God going to a cross and dying for us. No greater love exists than this, than a man lay down his life. Just lay it down. See, this is what you're looking for. This is what you need. This is what you want. This is what your soul cries out for. It's just this love that will not fail, that is courageous, is bold, is strong, will fight for you. Not a feeling. It's a relationship. And it's one you can have. And you need to have it. You need to get it. It needs to belong to you. You need to own it. You need to, you need to let God love you so that you can love him back. You need to let him love you. You need to let him love you. The good parts, 
and the bad parts and the, and the parts you want to admit and the parts you don't. And you just need to let him love you so you can love him back. So you can finally have what you're really looking for. So that things really will be all right. No matter which situation you're in. Do you want to give your life to Christ today? That's what I'm asking. Do you want to give your life to Christ today? You know, every Thursday now, my calendar is just full of people who are giving their lives to Christ. And you come and visit me on Thursday. That's what I want you to do. If you want to give your life to Christ today, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Then I'm going to ask you to walk out there and give your name to somebody at the information desk. And they'll give you a phone call. And I'll have the privilege and the honor of meeting you and talking to you on Thursday. There's no better use of my time. There is no better time in the week. Do you need Jesus? Just slip your hand up if you need Jesus. There you go. There you go. What I want you to do is just, when this is over, you just go out to the information desk and you just give them your name. God so loved the world. And you know, Jesus so loved you. Jesus so loved you that he gave himself. He made a decision that, that you were worth the price. You were worth the price. You're not gonna get that from anyone else or anything else. How about stand up? Receive this benediction now to that God who is still in the saving business, that God that loves you more than you could possibly love yourself. That God that poured himself out, just poured himself out in mercy and grace and devotion and courage and boldness and love. To that God, and you put your trust in him, then you'll be able to put your hold your head up and your chest out and your shoulders back. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.